So we're going to talk more about cell membranes and the proteins present, um, and we're gonna apply it right to passive transport. So the movement of substances without using ATP, that's what passive means. It's gonna be using a concentration gradient. So let's quickly review what a concentration gradient is. A concentration gradient is when something can move from high to low concentration, and therefore move spontaneously without energy input. Um, Concentration gradient is one mechanism for diffusion. It's the one we're gonna see here. So the example here is someone baked a batch of cookies and those odor molecules diffuse throughout space to if you're close enough, you could smell them. Eventually over time and distance, that smell would dissipate. They're dis distributedly, distributed e evenly enough and move to low concentrations. You can no longer smell the thing. So the um, a container, <clears throat> over time, molecules would spread to fill the space available to them. So diffusion is what it is. It's a movement, the net movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Without the use of energy, we're going towards equilibrium. This is what that looks like when we apply it to a cell membrane. So here's our plasma membrane. Extracellular fluid is ECF. The cytoplasm is um, contains the ICF. And if we've got some molecule here in high concentration, it's going to move over time to an area of low concentration, assuming the membrane is permeable to this ion. And this movement does not require energy input. Um, we're moving down the concentration gradient. There's a drive <clears throat> for this movement. What might this molecule be that's able to move freely across the plasma membrane without any, um, without a protein? Could be oxygen, carbon dioxide, something small and nonpolar, um, or it could be it could be water. What determines how quickly something can move across the membrane? Well. Let's talk about those factors. Um, first one, let's do size. So molecule size. Smaller things diffuse more quickly. So oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, water diffuses slower than glucose, primarily because it's smaller. They're both slightly charged. Next one is electrical charge. So charged molecules do not diffuse across easily. So the less charged, the less um, polarity there is, the more quickly it will move. So ions do not move across easily. Um, oxygen moves across quite easily, has no charge. Next one is temperature. This is something that doesn't vary in our bodies typically, um, but you know about kinetic energy. When you put temperature when you heat something up, molecules move around more quickly. And that's really what's happening when we have diffusion happening. Um, here, we've got red and gray separated. The more these molecules move around randomly, the more they mix up together. So mixing over time is really what diffusion is. Movement over time, spontaneously. So higher temperature is gonna create more movement due to kinetic energy and a higher rate of diffusion. Less important for this class in particular. Similar to the this last one, which is distance. Distance is um, distance for the molecule to travel, so of diffusion. So how thick is that plasma membrane? It's It doesn't vary, right? It's a fossil of layer. Um, there are cases where we have a larger distance in our body for things to diffuse. So this isn't unimportant in anatomy and physiology, but it will not be particularly important this week. Um, so those are the four things. One more thing that matters though, is our concentration gradient. You have to have a concentration gradient, a chemical gradient.
and yeah, so a large concentration gradient. Okay, let's do a learning check. Pause if you need to. And here's the review of that. So remember this image we've seen before, small hydrophobic molecules are more permeable. Um, the, the membrane is more permeable to them. They're able to pass through easily. For the molecules that are down here, so charged ions, we're going to need a membrane protein, a channel or a carrier or something to help it get across. So you've seen these membrane proteins before. Um, here they are with each component labeled. I want to mostly focus on um, the ones we're talking about right now are channels. So this is proteins that create a hydrophilic pocket for the ions to travel through so that they can cross across that plasma membrane. Channels can either be open, leak, or gated. Gated doesn't mean that they require ATP. It just means some stimulus is required to open the channel. But the one other one we're going to see later this week is receptors. That will be the other. Um, it is not a type of transport protein, but it's important for communication. One more type that is similar to channels is going to be carrier proteins. So I have listed down here. They are very similar to channels, but work a little bit differently. I've got these two shown here. So we're talking about passive transport across the membrane. This is going to involve diffusion. Diffusion can either be simple, meaning it doesn't require a membrane protein. So what molecules can go via this mechanism? Carbon dioxide, oxygen, steroid hormones are actually small enough. Um, then we've got facilitated diffusion. It's not facilitated by ATP, it's facilitated by a protein. Let's start with this one over here. This one is a channel. In this case, it's not gated, it's just open. And these small lipid insoluble, this means probably charged ions um, are able to pass through, whereas they can't pass through the hydrophobic tails of the bilayer. They can't cross through here. This might be potassium, sodium, chloride, charged things. Still down a gradient, still passive transport, but requires that protein just to be there. Just be there. Carrier molecules are similar to channels. They're also called transporters. But instead of just being open channels, they change shape to allow their molecule through. They're typically used for um, glucose, amino acids, other sugars, um, still down a concentration gradient. Okay, so that's these are all cases of when we're moving a solute from one side of the cell to the other. One more example of passive transport is the movement of water. This is called osmosis. This is passive, passive transport, but it can either be simple diffusion right through the plasma membrane, or it can be facilitated. Water is pretty small. It's a little bit polar. So some of it can, can pass across the membrane, slower diffusion rate than oxygen. So these proteins, these are called aquaporins, are um, often present to allow water to diffuse more quickly. We'll talk more about osmosis. Osmosis, the movement of water. Passively. Okay, learning check. Pause if you need to.